How you doing everybody? CJ Williams, PT Media. Specializing in podcast production, video production. Um, be sure to subscribe. In this video, I want to talk about, you know, three things that you may you gotta watch out for when you're going into these retainers. I know retainers are something that a lot of people strive for when they get in this business because it's consistent income, stability, you get to grow your business. But there are three things I think that you, you might want to look out for and make sure you have contracts and all that stuff clearly state this kind of stuff to protect you and keep you from, you know, you know, being taken advantage of. And you know, I want you want to enjoy what you do. So, uh, again, be sure to subscribe to this because I got a lot of content on this channel. And for me to only have the subscribers I have, I feel like it's uh, it's blasphemous. Uh, but again, let's get into it. So, number one, you want these retainers is and make sure your retainer clients Regardless of how much money they're paying you, you still want them to be your ideal client. Meaning that the work you do with them, they should be aligned with your ideal client. I, everybody will tell you, you gotta have a niche when you get into the business. And I think that is true. Um, I started out, you know, knowing I wanted to do business, wanted to work with business. I wasn't doing weddings and music videos, but it's still like, what type of videos and what type of business do you want to work? So I still had to niche down that first couple of years. I kind of had to figure that out. And so I, decided to go with like bigger podcast production type stuff. Your retainer clients still have to be your ideal clients because you, the whole goal with working with anybody is you want to be able to take what you do at one to use it to attract other ones. But if you're somebody that's off, way off from what you normally do, do you have a talk? It's like you'll be running two different brands at the same time. Case in point, I was working with a comedian. Um, this was a pretty good experience for me. Uh, the money was good, um, but what are the chances I get to work with other comedians? What are the chances a comedian, and now he wasn't even a high level comedian, but he had a financier, somebody that was paying for them to help do stuff. So, you know, hey, I was there. So, um, but I don't, so I can't use that work I do with a comedian to, to go work with uh, uh, realtors, or at the time I think I was working with another uh, home improvement business. Like the work I do with, with this, this, this comedian is not going to translate over like a realtor is not if a realtor is looking for somebody to help them with their content. And I showed them some stuff I did with a the comedian, they'd be like, well, this doesn't work for me. Like this ain't, this ain't shit for me. Like, so, um, I think that's important. You have to, they still have to be ideal clients. Now I can use behind the scenes photos and things like that, but I'm my, I like to blog about situations, how we resolve in situations, how we get through it, the success we're having. I like to blog about that. I can't use this stuff, the situations I have with this comedian, in part in my branding when I'm blogging and things like that, because it's not relatable. Nobody else is gonna relate to it. Again, how, what's the chances I get to work with another comedian? It's not, they're not just, you're not just gonna go meet comedians everywhere. Nor do I even really care to work with comedians. I did it at the time because it was money and it was pretty good too. Um, so that's that. So make sure your retainer clients are, they still have to be your ideal clients. Um, so that's that. Number two is you have to make sure your content co uh, contracts are are tight and be clear on what it is you're there to do and what your agreements are. You don't want them treating you as a as an employee. You are there to work with them. You're a contractor to work with them, not for them. Make sure you express to them and they all agree on, hey, when we get this is the days we get together once or twice a month. This is how much time we're gonna spend. These are gonna be your deliverables. You have a set number or whatever, how it's going to look, reels, and vertical video, YouTube, whatever. But be, uh, you know, you got to be, that's 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 going to be it. There's nothing, we don't veer off course with that. And if, if I need to know the date two weeks in advance so I can plan my schedule out, don't call me last minute. You know, and, don't, and if you miss that day or you have to reschedule, then that's on you. And be firm in that. That's the word I was looking for. Be firm on that. Um, another thing, if uh, who who's coming up with the content, like or who's writing scripts, who's coming up with the material, in most cases it's going to be them, the client, and if they don't have anything, they're standing around looking at you like, well, what are we going to do? You better figure it out because you're going to get out what you put in, and if you don't put any, if we don't have anything to shoot, you don't have any content, then your deliverables are going to suffer. So be firm and let them know, look, I'm not here to write your stuff, I'm not here to create, unless you are. There's some cases where I've worked with people where, I, hey, I'll agree. I'll write these scripts. I'll get these scripts written for you. All you got to do is show up and, and read them, and we'll be good. So there's some situations where you will do that. But if it's, if it's not on you, then, hey, it's not on me. 
again, y'all be sure to subscribe to this channel. I hope the information I'm presenting to you guys is helpful. Um, I don't want you guys to be out here hating your life. You know, you should be enjoying what you do. So be sure to subscribe to this channel. And this is the last one. And I think this one probably, uh, this might hit a little bit, hit harder to some people is, it, this is especially if you're a growing business like I was last year, or I still am, like well, always a growing business. Don't get locked into a 12 month contract. Don't agree to, I know it sounds good, but don't do it because by, you might, one, you might get tired of working with them. You might not like them, all right? Um, two is, as you are a growing business, your rates will change. So what you agreed on three months ago, four months ago, is probably not be the rate you would do it at. You're controlling, you're taking on other projects while you're working with them. You're raising your rates, you're raising your status, your branding is better, you, you, you're becoming known for something. You don't wanna be 10, nine, 10 months into something doing it at half the prices you would you know, I would say six months at the most. So that way you guys can come back to the table and renegotiate things or whatever. And if they don't want to work with you, that's fine. Go continue growing your business. But if, but don't just let it, don't just do it just because it's, it's, it's reliable money. Like you still got to earn what you, your, you know, earn, earn your worth. Um, so I was in a situation, again, working with a comedian by the third, by the fourth month, I was like, man, I don't I don't know this money is worth it for me. Like I could, I should have charged much more or it's just too much work. I wasn't, you know, I was letting them drag me around and call me, hey, can you come to there? I'm like, man, man, I really don't want to do this. Like, but so my faults and the stuff I suffer from, I want to give to you guys and make sure you guys don't deal with that. So here it is, just a recap. Number one is uh, make sure they're still your ideal client. You want to be able to build your business with the stuff you do with this client. You want to be able to use that content and how you work with this client to, to attract more clients like them. Uh, number two is, remember, they, you don't work for them, you work with them. You're not an employee, so don't let them treat you like one. Put a contract in place and be firm on, on everything. And lastly, don't get locked into a 12 month agreement unless it's like for double what you, you normally would charge, whatever, so as far as astronomical. But in the beginning, like, you don't wanna get locked into something and then six, seven months down the line, you're like, man, this ain't even worth it. It ain't worth my time. So. There it is. Again, CJ Williams here. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave comments. Love to know what you guys think. If you guys have run into any situations like this, or maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me being dumb and not knowing. But again, I don't want you guys to fall into that. So um, love to know what you guys think. Be sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. All right, peace.